Good morning for everybody. Uh, my name is Virpi Korhonen and, and uh, my uh, research background is in food sciences and marketing and I've done several projects uh, with Markus before I started my own company a couple of years ago. And uh, today I will show you some of, some of our business cases that relate to uh, consumer perceptions and value uh, for sustainable packaging materials and technologies. Um, Sensan Insight uh, was um, founded in 2017 by uh, three different companies. And actually our motivation was to help the brands and uh, the whole value chain to create better packaging for the consumers. And what we do uh, is that uh, we have an office in a shopping center and uh, we study all the different touch points in packaging as Markus uh, in, in his presentation presented the different um, uh, moments of truth. So actually we go over all of those. So we uh, apply eye tracking in uh, 3D environment uh, to study different design lines and uh, which of those stand out the best because all of us know that unseen will be unsolved so it's very important to study your your design in advance before you launch it uh, to the market. We also study then the functionalities of packaging and uh, uh, we have developed a specific tool for that it's called the value toolkit and I will show you some cases around that framework. So we study how the, how the, how the physical mockups function. Uh, for example, if, if the brand wants to switch from plastics packaging to uh, carton packaging, we make sure that the carton packaging uh, will function as well as, as the plastics packaging because we know from our experience uh, that consumers are not willing to sacrifice functionality for sustainability and uh, that's a fact even though somebody might claim, claim something else but it's, it's a very important uh, thing in packaging. And then uh, finally we also study how the packaging communicates the properties of the product inside and then we also study the product in itself with usually it's food as 70% of all packaging is food and beverage. So uh, we have also a partner uh, who studies the sensory properties of the product inside and then we will study if there are significant gaps in between the perceptions based on packaging and the product itself. And if there is a big gap, it usually ends uh, in a situation that consumers won't buy the product again because they will be disappointed uh, uh, in, the pack in the product when they taste it. Um, this is something that Markus uh, already talked about a bit but I, I can never stress it enough that if you want to define the value of your packaging for the end user you always have to have to ask the end user this is the biggest mix mistake that the brands usually make that they, the brand manager or the designer or, or a group of people inside the company uh, decide which uh, design will be the best or the mo best selling for the market without asking any consumers. And uh, that's, that's an important thing to stress that you should always ask the consumer uh, how they feel because the, something that you consider an, a great in innovation or, or a, a significant improve, improvement uh, for your pa packaging might be something that the consumers don't get at all. They don't understand it. Or it's not relevant for the product category, for example. And uh, that's why we also like to study the designs on concrete mockups so that uh, because the pictures of packaging, uh, they might, the consumers might, might find those appealing, but as Markus mentioned, all these other attributes, how they contribute to the value experience. So sounds, odd sounds or odd uh, functionalities might ruin the whole concept and, and 
that's why we always prefer that uh, the, the testing should be con conducted with uh, concrete prototypes and also you ha should have the um, maybe a competitor uh, competing uh, or substituting um, packages also available so that because the value experience it's always relational for the for the consumers and of course then also you have to define carefully the user context uh, before testing the packaging because something that you buy for yourself as opposed to uh, as a gift they are whole different uh, properties that the consumers will uh, uh, value. Um, we have applied uh, Holbrook's um, framework for uh, value. This is uh, for marketing literature and uh, to, to develop this very basic framework for studying uh, packaging value for the consumers. So, so as you can see, there are two uh, dimension. So the first dimension uh, is from value in use to value in itself. So, uh, and the second uh, dimension varies from personal value, how I how it contributes my well-being as opposed to collective value. And we have um, then labeled uh, these four main uh, types of value as performance, experience, status value, and responsibility. And we have a digital tool, that's the version now, one, actually maybe 3.0 now, that, that we are still validating uh, in our studies uh, for our customers, but uh, we study each of these subtypes which are displayed there. So there are six sub subtypes of uh, value for each main, main type and uh, each of those will be studied with two, uh, two counterparts. For example, the subtype of appeal would be studied by the counterparting attributes of appealing, unappealing and tempting, repulsive. And the consumers will pick one of, one of the, these two uh, counterparts of none of them, so they can also press skip. And, and this is the tool that we uh, use to eva evaluate the uh, physical concepts. And there you can see it in practice. So it's, a, it's, it's run on a tablet computer and there are also some questions before the experience and after e experience about willingness to pay and preference. And then we, then we are interested that how the willingness to pay uh, will react uh, or how the consumers will uh, react to the packaging in terms of willingness to pay. So if the willingness to pay goes down during the packaging experience or after it, that means that the packaging will decrease the value of your product and nobody of course wants that to happen. Then uh, I have a, a couple of case studies. I thought that I will introduce then for them first with a short video, and then I can show you the value profiles. Package testing and researchin pilotissa kehitettiin ekologinen ja kuluttajalähtöinen ratkaisu ruukkukukkien pakkaamiseen. Kuluttajien toiveissa oli toiminnallinen, esteettinen ja ekologinen pakkaus, joka suojaisi kukkaa säästä riippumatta. Pakkaussuunnittelijan avulla kehitettiin työpajassa suomalaisesta paktikmateriaalista valmistettu lahjapussi, joka muuntuu suojaruukuksi. Lahjapussin sisällä oleva kukan suojapussi valmistettiin niin ikään sellupohjaisesta vuudelimateriaalista. Tällä ollaan nyt taklattu tosiaan sitä muovin käyttöä, eli nyt meillä on pelkästään ekologisia materiaaleja tässä pakkauksessa, niin sulkupussi menee paperin keräykseen ja sisäpussi menee muovin keräykseen, mutta se on sellupohjaisesta materiaalista tehty. Kuluttajilta saatu palaute on ollut erittäin positiivista. Lahjapussin suurimmiksi eduiksi katsottiin helppo kannettavuus ja esteettinen ulkonäkö. Mua miellyttää erityisesti tämä monikäyttöisyys tästä ulkopussista ja sitten tuo potentiaalinen ekologisuus tuossa tuotteessa. Jos löydetään joku kestävä vaihtoehto muoville, niin se kuulostaa ihan todella innostavalta. 
Pilotti osoitti, että koko pakkausarvoketjun kattavalla yhteistyöllä ja aidosti kuluttajalähtöisellä suunnittelulla on mahdollisuus luoda ekologisia lisäarvotuotteita, jotka kasvattavat tuotteiden kysyntää. I will shortly show you the value profiles of, 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 of the concept that we developed and all, all the substituting concepts. So how we started the project uh, to create the design brief was that we studied with the value toolkit all these substituting alter alternatives that existed on the market. So there's this thermal bag that you can use in the winter, then another kind of a polo made of polystyrene uh, kind of thermal bag as well and then there's a paper bag and you can see the profiles for each so uh, the black area is negative value so you can see that with the plastic alternatives uh, the responsibility uh, di um, dimension that's highly negative and with the paper bag it's it's uh, very positive but then the performance is failing uh, in the paper bag because it doesn't actually uh, pro um, protect the flower that much and you can't reclose re it very uh, well. So then when we developed the new concept and studied it again with the same tool, you can see that all the dimensions are very uh, high in value. So uh, the, this actually um, validates the work of the designer and how they have succeeded to, to uh, design the packaging based on the consumer's uh, um, hopes and wishes and this, these are the highest rating attributes so very flattering actually for the packaging so you can see all these uh, uh, attributes on the top uh, that have been rated 100% so there's both both attributes to uh, functionality as well, well as uh, sustainability and then the Woodley uh, uh, cellulose based material inside. Uh, before the study we studied um, uh, regular plastics on a, on a potted flower and then woodly plastics. You could see uh, that the, the uh, responsibility dimension there it's much higher for woodly and then again when we applied it on in this concept it's even better now uh, for this more expensive flower that's inside this the cost of this flower was about around five euro and for that it was 25 euro so actually it, it also boosted the value of the product product uh, better than for less expensive uh, products of course it one reason might be also why the value profile is much higher that um, there's more plastics. There's like maybe three times more or two times more plastics uh, applied to the large flower than the small small flower. And these are again the, the highest rating attributes. Very, very positive. Then I have another case. This is a short case as well. It's by Metzaboard. Metsäbordin nautoruokapakkauspilotissa kehitettiin uusi ratkaisu ravintolaannosten takeaway-pakkaamiseen. Kuluttajat halusivat kestävän, toimivan, esteettisen ja ekologisen pakkauksen, joka edistää lämpöä ja on mahdollista sulkea uudelleen. Työpajassa luotiin takeaway-pakkauskonsepteja yhteistyössä opiskelijoiden, ravintoloitsijoiden ja pakkaussuunnittelijoiden kanssa. Ideoinnin pohjalta suunniteltiin suomalaisesta Metsäbordin kartongista valmistettu modulaarinen ja kierrätettävä takeaway-pakkaus. Pakkauksessa käytetty ensikuitukartonki sopii suoraan kontaktiin ruoan kanssa. Kartonki on kevyttä, mutta jäykkää ja siitä valmistetut pakkaukset ovat tukevia käytössä. Pakkauksen sisäosat joustavat annoksen mukaan ja annos on helppo jakaa vaikka perheen tai ystävien kesken. Pakkauksen ulkoosaan on mahdollista saada oma visuaalinen ilme ja logotarra. 
Pakkaus on herättänyt suurta kiinnostusta loppukäyttäjien keskuudessa. Ekologisuuden ja yksinkertaisen rakenteen lisäksi pakkauksessa viehättävät sen siisti ja edustava ulkonäkö. Pilotti osoitti, että koko pakkausarvoketjun kattavalla yhteistyöllä ja aidosti kuluttajalähtöisellä suunnittelulla on mahdollisuus luoda ekologisia lisäarvoratkaisuja, jotka auttavat ruoan takeaway-myyntiä. And again, these are the value profiles for the um, current um, or the uh, substituting um, alternative. So there's the PS uh, container that is widely used now, which will be prohibited uh, in a couple of years uh, in the single by the single use plastics directive. And then there's Bagassi, which is uh, biodegradable, but it doesn't really, it, it's, um, it's not that good with, with heated uh, food and also the moisture will go through quite fast actually so you can't preserve food there very long time. And then what was especially liked by this Metzabold board multi-tray concept was that uh, it's easy to share with your friends so you can take out the small compartments and put those on the table and then you can mix those portions with, with your friends. Uh, and that was a very nice uh, attribute in the, in, the, in the concept. And again, you can see that they are very, very nice, nice um, attribute ratings for the, for the concept uh, overall. Then I, I will just go very briefly over uh, a couple of cases of intelligent packaging. This is um, uh, after opening timer. I don't know if you've seen this before, but once you open a taco sauce or a mayo sauce, uh, it will start ticking. And if you put it on a counter and it will get uh, some higher temperature, it will speed up the timer. So it tells you when the product is still edible. And uh, we studied this in taco sauce. And again, you can see that very much fuller profile with the one with the timer. So we presented this concept to the consumers and asked that how do they feel, feel about the, of the current um, um, packaging as opposed to uh, the packaging, same exact same packaging, but with, with, a, with a timer. And you can see that much higher profile, value profile. And these are the great, greatest um, increases in the ratings with the consumer. So very, again, flattering uh, attributes. Uh, I don't know any brand who wouldn't like to uh, be associated with these kinds of attributes. So valuable, prestigious, imaginative, insightful, forerunner, skillful, all these attributes. They, they increased a lot in the ratings when this uh, indicator was uh, introduced. Another application, I think this is a very good and smart application. It's, uh, it's a uh, temperature indicator that will destroy the barcode if if the chill chain has uh, been cut. So the product cannot be sold from the store if it's been kept in too high temperature. And again, with this uh, very big difference, this is grounded beef <laughs> packaging. So you can see that it uh, promotes a lot to the, or adds up to the value of the product. Uh, and uh, especially in the status value um, uh, dimension, so uh, it also contributes to the brand and uh, its quality image. And again, the, th these are the highest ratings or the differences in the ratings uh, for, the, for the packaging without the indicator and with the indicator. So very high, high increase in value perceptions. So to conclude, um, what are, would, be, would be the takeaways from this is that what we have found out in, in our case studies that if you uh, are able to identify the biggest problem the consumers have with these indicators, it's the families with small children or with elderly uh, 
parents, for example, we talked, of, you had a question about elderly people, so they are actually, the, the relatives are very scared for, the, for, the, for their parents <laughs> so that they will um, get, eat bad food or poisonous food, or, and this would be a very nice way of uh, in also learning that what has been opened when and, and, and so on, so they would tr could track the, the contents of the fridge and maybe know that what's been going on there and have they been eating anything and what's opened and what's unopened and so on. And then uh, also uh, it's very valuable to study these um, new concepts and fail uh, um, early enough than, than on the market because it's very expensive to launch something that doesn't work. And then uh, packaging design should be treated as an investment because it's uh, in store, it's very important. Uh, as I said, unseen is unsold. And then also what actually we work with a lot uh, uh, at the moment is that the values that the packaging uh, um, represents. So it represents your brand 24 seven and that's very important at the, in, the, in these times, how the, what kind of values your packaging will communicate to the end users. Okay, this was my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you.